So what we're going to do to find the rate law is uh, we're going to find the rate for the second reaction because Cl is an intermediate, but NO is not an intermediate, Cl2 is not an intermediate, and NOCl is not an intermediate. So we're going to find the rate for the second one because that's the one that produces the products that are not intermediates. So rate 2 equals K2 Cl squared and O squared, which could be fine. However, I have Cl here. So I need an expression for Cl as the intermediate. So what we'll do is when we don't know what's the slow step, we'll say, OK, the rate of appearance of my intermediate equals the rate of disappearance. Or the rate of production equals the rate of reaction. So first, where is it produced? Well, in the first reaction forward, rate 1. And then I think that's the only place it's produced. Everywhere else it disappears or uh, is reacted. So rate 1 reverse, and rate 2 is where you see the CL. OK, let's uh, plug in for this. So rate 1 is, uh, let's see, K1, CL2. Rate 1 reverse is K1 prime, CL squared. Rate 2 is K2, CL squared, oops, squared, and O squared. Oh my goodness. Okay, we want to solve for CL. So, that's worse than I thought. K1 prime, I'm going to factor out the CLs to the right, plus K2 times NO squared uh, CL squared. Okay? Now I'm going to solve for that CL squared. So I'm going to divide through. I'll write it up here. That would be uh, K1 times CL2 all over K1 prime plus K2 and O squared equals CL squared. I could take the square root of both sides just to find CL, but I don't think I need to do that because I just I need to know what CL squared is. So I'm gonna plug this as is right in here. Because I want CL squared really. So rate two equals K2 NO squared. So I wrote just these parts so far. Now I'll write the CL, which is this. That is times K1 times CL2 all over K1 prime plus K2 NO squared. That's my answer. I could rearrange a little bit by putting the k's over here together. But essentially, yeah, that's it. Yes? Could I have then um, R1 like assume R1 equals R1? Yeah, you can do that. So uh, it'll make it a little easier. So I'm going to erase this part. Oh, yes, before I erase. Oh, it's not up. It's about the rate one equals rate one prime. How come sometimes you've done it where rate one just equals rate one prime, and sometimes you've done it where rate one equals rate two? Yeah. Sometimes it's both together. I know what you're talking about. Uh, this is the case where I use the PSSH assumption. So it's it looks like it'll usually look like rate one equals rate one prime plus something else. Uh, that is a better assumption than saying rate 1 equals rate 1 reverse. Uh, if the problem doesn't specify, you can do whatever you want. So, which 
uh, Tina was just saying, let's do rate one, equals rate one reverse, which we'll do in a second. That's the easier way. However, Hannah wanted the most difficult problem possible. So I did it the more difficult way. But this answer will encompass Tina's suggestion. So it'll well. specify that you should do. Either it'll specify, say to use PSSH in the question, or it will be unsolvable if you don't do that. Yeah. Um, why did you do R1 equals R1 prime plus R2? Why did I do that? Yeah. Uh, that's my PSSH. So rate one, this is for uh, CL, my intermediate. So it's produced in rate one. It's consumed in the reverse reaction and in the second reaction. Oh, okay. So, and that's the PSSH thing. Okay, let's try the other suggestion. I'm going to erase some things here. <coughs> if not specified otherwise, there's no reason uh, not to try this. Now it might not work, and then you have to do it the other way, but it, it'll, it'll work in this question. So, we'll see that Cl, K1, Cl2 equals K1 reverse Cl squared. Let's solve for the Cl. Uh, Cl squared equals K1 over K1 prime Cl2. So just rearranged. Now I'm going to plug this as in up here, as is up here, uh, because it's CL squared up there. So we'll combine this and that. Rate 2 equals K2 times NO squared. So I wrote these two. Now I'm going to write the CL squared, then my substitution will be K1 over K1 prime. Uh, times C L uh, two. Yep, there we go. Okay. Zone down for a second. Okay. Notice what am I assuming to get this answer? You're assuming that K two is large or small. Yeah, K2 is, is basically small. So in this case, if K2 is small, this disappears and you get the same answer. So inherently, in, in solving it that way, assume K2 is small. You would not be able to do that if, say, it said in the question, like you can't do that or something. If, if they don't say, do I have to write it down assume K2 is small? Or can I just write the answer? If nothing's stated, it's, I, I say it wouldn't be bad that you're assuming that. Whenever you do assume one is reversible, the one you're assuming that's reversible and fast is the fast one. So inherently you're assuming this one's a slow one, if you solve it this way. So I'll try to be specific in the question on the final, so it's clear what to do. Or I won't be specific, and that means there's only one way to solve it. So it'd be so wrong. Oh, okay.